Hey, I'm Greg Moran from Evergreen Mountain Equity Partners and Evergreen Growth. Today, we're diving into how to create a killer board deck uh, that's really strategic. So you stop wasting your time, you stop wasting your investors' time and really start to make board meetings worth it for both yourself, your team, and your investors. So we want to really be built. We're going to talk about building a board deck. Like I said, that's strategic that not only informs, but it really drives meaningful decisions and meaningful discussions. Can't tell you how many, I'm on a lot of boards. Can't, and I've been the CEO of companies with a lot of boards. Can't tell you how much time I have wasted on discussions that went nowhere, that weren't relevant, decisions that didn't get made, wasted time for me, wasted time for my team, wasted time for for our investors, stop doing that. So if you're a CEO, you're an executive, or you're someone really looking to understand the dynamics of board communication, this guide is really going to be for you. So first, what is a board deck really? What isn't it? Board deck is not about detailing every task you've completed or showing me as a board member how busy you are. This is often what board meetings turn into, especially for management teams who haven't been trained on how to do this. But instead, it's really a strategic tool designed to reflect on the broader issues that are facing your company. The big things that you don't often take the time to be reflecting on because you're involved in day-to-day -day ops. This is what gives you that time. Think of it as an opportunity to step back, assess where things are heading, be challenged, communicate clearly, with your board members and let them challenge you to really talk, think about what are those broader issues. So board members typically focus on really four key areas. Number one, your strategy. Number two, your leadership. Are you actually an effective leader? And that of your senior executive team, are they effective leaders? Financial performance of the company and governance. Basically, are things happening above board? They're not interested in your day-to-day -day operations. They're not going to understand them. They're not that close. What they care about is whether the business is on track strategically and whether the right leadership is in place. And that includes you as the founder. So if the financials align with the forecast and whether the company is operating within ethical and legal guidelines, that's it. Those four areas, strategy, leadership, financial performance, governance. If you're spending your time on day-to-day -day operations, you're wasting your time, you're wasting theirs, and you're wasting your team's time. Stop doing that. So let's now dive into how to craft a board deck. Process starts. This is the best information, the best guidance I ever got in building a deck. Don't build a single page until you have identified what are the three big takeaways that you want from this meeting. What are the three critical insights or actions that you want your board to focus on. If you focus your board, they will respond. If you're unfocused, they will go everywhere. That's not an insult to boards. I'm on boards where if the founder does not run this effectively, I don't know what to focus on. So I end up focusing in areas, but there probably is a waste of time. Once you get those three big takeaways clear, your slides should be built to support these takeaways with data and analysis. Not necessarily presume an outcome unless that's the unless there is an action that you're looking for support on from your board, but that the slides are really to support these three big takeaways with real data and real analysis. Remember, less is more. Stop cluttering your slides with a bunch of unnecessary information. That's just more justification of how busy you are. Each slide needs to have one clear message. And then that's backed by relevant data. As a board member, tell me what to think. I'll determine whether I agree with you or not. Tell me what you want me to think. And then I'll make my own decision of whether I'm on the same page. Even the best leaders that I know make mistakes when creating board decks. I've made so many of them in my career, I can't even count them. Some of the common mistakes really include, and again, the, all of these are things I've done, presenting too much data without insight, just putting tons of data on a page, but I don't know what it means, right? And how am I, And if I'm the founder, I'm the CEO, and I don't know what it means, how are my investors supposed to know what it means, right? Provide the insight with the data. 
focusing, another big problem, focusing on too much on tasks instead of strategic analysis. Well, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this, we did this. Okay, but what does all that add up to? I don't know. And then failing, another common mistake, failing to provide clear recommendations. You're giving me the data. You're giving me the strategic analysis. Okay, what do you want me to do with it? If I'm a board member, what do you want me to do with that information? What is your recommendation? You're the leader. What do you want to do with that information? You can really avoid all of these pitfalls by keeping your deck strategic, keeping it concise, and keeping it focused on driving the decisions that you need to get made. So before you finalize your board deck, take a moment to really reflect, right? You've got it done, all the slides are built, now step back. Ask yourself, does my, port, does my report really align with our strategy? Will it instill confidence in my leadership to the board? Is it easy to understand for those not involved in the day-to-day -day operations. These reflections can be the difference between a great board deck and a, one that is a waste of time, frankly. The first one I wanna, I just wanna go back. I mentioned a few things there, but I wanna hit on one of the things I just said, which is, does it align with corporate strategy? Again, cannot tell you, I've made this mistake myself, cannot tell you how many times I've been in board meetings where the recommendations are not aligned with the strategy at all, right? Where a leader is saying, I want to go do this other thing, but they're not taking me along in their thinking. It's just showing up on a slide. That's confusing. And it's unnerving if you're a board member. Make sure that if you have a switch in strategy that's occurring from what you've aligned with on your board, you're really explaining this to your board. Why does this need to happen? What's the data? What are we seeing that is dictating the shift in strategy? Don't just drop it onto a slide. Make sure you're bringing them along with the logic and the data on this. And there you have it. That's your guide to creating a strategic board deck that truly makes an impact, that stops wasting your time, your management team's time, and your investors' time. So if you found this video helpful, like it, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content for high growth startups uh, and investors and venture capital funding and all that kind of stuff. And don't forget to share your thoughts and your questions in the comments below. We're going to try, we'll answer them. So put them in there. For more on this topic and a lot of others that are relevant for startup founders and investors, check out our blog at emep.io. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.